my friend Terence McKenna used to say, uh, modern science is based on the principle, give us one free miracle and we'll explain the rest. Just trust the science and get on with it. Trying to get people to trust the science. Take a look at this. My message to people out there is to trust the process. Trust the scientists. Since the start of the pandemic, we heard the phrase, trust the science. It's repeated like a mantra over and over again. This term started to become some sort of politically correct answer to all the questions we are not comfortable answering. But what does this phrase actually mean? What if it doesn't mean what it sounds like? No one knows what it means, but it's provocative. Trust the science phrase is made out of two important words. Trust, which is to believe something is true, although you have no proof. And science, a systematic study of the world through observation and experiment. Word science is derived from Latin word scienta, which means knowledge. So science is the never-ending search for new knowledge. Thus, trust the science phrase is believing something without having proof plus study of the world through observation and experiment. This sentence is telling us to blindly believe in the study of the world through observation and experiment, which makes sense, but we forgot something. something really important in this phrase, trust the science. The most important part of the sentence is the science. That means that we should trust this specific science. Which one is that, you might wonder, when science is a method and not a definite solution? How can we blindly trust a specific science when the whole idea of science is a never-ending search for new knowledge? This is where mainstream media and academic consensus come into play. They will choose which data and scientific outcome they like, and then they will bombard you with this info until you blindly believe in it. Then, most of us will start repeating it, like a mantra, without actually pausing to think, what does it mean? There is no good in weaponizing science for social and political gain. Science is a method, and not a title, reserved to only specific research done by academically accepted scientists. As a matter of fact, a scientist is a person who conducts scientific research to advance knowledge in an area of interest. This means that anyone using scientific method to advance knowledge in a specific area is a scientist. There is no school or university diploma that can qualify you for such work. It's a process that anyone can perform to reach a conclusion in regards to their hypothesis. In today's world, it does seem like the widely accepted notion is coming from non-elected individuals whose science is taken for granted, while the rest of us should not dare to question it. This is perfectly explained by Dr. Rupert Sheldrake in his TED talk, The Science Delusion. He is pointing out that there are scientific dogmas which the majority of well-known scientists agreed upon. Those dogmas are essentially just a set of personal beliefs that are presented as science, so therefore you and everyone else should just bluntly accept it and move on. This doesn't look like science at all. Science, as we learned earlier, 
is a systematic study of the world through observation and experiment. This means that anyone who has a reason to test some hypothesis should be allowed to do so. If their scientific method discovers proof of some alternative outcome, we as a society should embrace that evidence until we find a better one. We should not accept personal beliefs to stand in a way of finding more accurate truth. Science is not a constant, but rather an ever-involving quest for better answers. To add insult to the injury, this TED talk was banned on the basis that Rupert's statements were not scientifically correct, proving once again that the media is taking a position on the outcome of science, rather than allowing debate and experiments to find the best answer. Another interesting fact is that right after some of the major scientific breakthroughs in the 50s, pseudoscience terms started gaining popularity. It looks like this term is used to denounce any alternative theories or scientific work that goes against pre-agreed mainstream narrative. However, this doesn't mean that there are no bad actors when it comes to presenting scientific work. In fact, there is a lot of misquoting of science everywhere around us. Statements like scientists tell us, science is telling us, according to science, and trust the science, are used to add fake credibility to the statements without proper understanding. In order to have a real meaning and value, those statements must be accompanied with quoted research and its conclusions. Even then, people should be skeptical and read the documents themselves, because bias scientists that receive funding from corporate interest might make misleading statements in the conclusions, even if the data from the peer-reviewed document is showing different. Good examples of this can be found in various studies done to show low-carb versus low-fat diets and their effects on weight loss. But this is a topic for another video. Science is best practiced with a healthy dose of skepticism. In order to be a good scientist, one must always be skeptical of its findings and processes. This is also true for those who rely on the findings of those research documents. Due to the nature of scientific method and our observation of the world around us, we should be skeptical of any statements that are trying to make some scientific conclusion final and presented as the ultimate truth. We are constantly learning more about ourselves and our environment, and that's why we need to stay open-minded and thirsty for more new knowledge. I encourage you all to jump in on this never-ending quest to learn more. We are all scientists by design. A science delusion is the belief that science already understands the nature of the reality in principle, leaving only details to be filled in. Rupert Sheldrake I highly recommend watching Rupert's TED talk and subscribing to his channel. It's both educational and entertaining. I will leave the link for you in the description below. If you enjoyed this video and learned something new, please like and subscribe and let me know what you think in the comments below. Have a good one.